Do you want to hire the best salespeople for your company? Our friends at SalesFuel have developed a digital platform to help sales managers hire smarter, and it's called SalesFuel Hire. SalesFuel Hire is an online software tool that measures a candidate's sales tendencies, motivational factors, empathy, and behaviors, along with key indicators that identify job fit. It will even warn you if the candidate is going to be toxic to your team. The analytics identify natural tendencies that often go undetected during the interview. Don't you want to hire a salesperson that's a natural fit? Candidates complete a four-part assessment, and then Sales Fuel Hire alerts the hiring manager on what to look for in the interview. It also suggests interview questions based on that person's profile. And most importantly, your team needs no training to get started. Because you're listening to this show, I can give you a special one-time deal. You can purchase one month of unlimited access to Sales Fuel Hire for $199, but only if you use the promotional code LORN, that's L-O-R-N-E. With this special offer, you can send an unlimited number of candidates through the Sales Fuel Hire tool. To get started, go to salesfuel.com backslash hire and use the promotional code LORN, that's L-O-R-N-E, to get this amazing deal. Hi, welcome back to another episode of the Lauren Epstein Show. I'm your host, Lauren Epstein, and today we are at the Talent Board event, which is the Candy Awards, the Kennedy Experience Awards. This is an annual event uh, where Talent Board gives an award to the companies that do the best in, in recruiting. And it's all based on candidates' experience, so that's kind of cool. They collect hundreds of thousands of, uh, of surveys from candidates who applied to companies and tabulate all the scores and give the feedback to the recruiters, and the recruiters change you know, they, they take that feedback in, improve their processes, and, and, uh, and hoping to, to win an award. So tonight's the dinner, and tomorrow and the next day, we're going to be here for the Electronic Recruiting Exchange, ERE, who's sharing these shows for us, which is great. We want to say thanks to ERE and thanks to the Talent Board for being one of our sponsors. So um, for those of you who don't know, we're, we're here in Washington, D.C. right now, today, and uh, I live across the water in Arlington, and in my hometown of Arlington, Virginia, we're all talking about our newest, our newest corporate neighbor, <laughs> Amazon. Uh, Amazon's coming to Arlington. Uh, with me today is the recruiting manager for Amazon Web Services in the specialty recruiting organization, Alan Henshaw. Welcome to the show, Alan. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Alan's mission is to produce and execute innovative ideas that allows Amazon Web Services to hire software engineers more efficiently for Amazon globally. Uh, Alan has over a decade of experience in talent acquisition from both corporate and agency environments, and he loves scaling up recruiting operations. There you go. Right? That's in a nutshell. That's in a nutshell. Welcome yeah. to the show, man. Appreciate so, it. So, uh, so how long have you been in recruiting? Man, uh, 12, 13 years, you know, started in the agency world, grinding it out like a lot of people did. And How'd then, you get in? <laughs> atypical um, kind of, you know, experience. I actually went into a staffing agency in Phoenix, Arizona about a sales job. And so, you know, they sit there and they interview you and everything. And then uh, a little bit later, the smaller uh, firm, the owner comes in and it's like, hey, have you ever considered recruiting? I'm like, nope, don't even know what it is. <laughs> and uh, they kind of flipped the script on me. And, um, you know, offered me a job. I started kind of, you know, poking around a little bit. And that's kind of how I got into to recruiting, just kind of backwards, you know. Nice. Yeah. I think most of us get into recruiting by accident. Yeah. I mean, nobody's going to college, you know, uh, geared towards going into recruiting. It's usually some kind of random event. Nice. And, and, and what brought you to Amazon? Um, you know, I had done corporate. Um, I'd worked for publicly traded companies. I'd done agency. Um, you know, the... The, the brand uh, of, of Amazon, I mean, I, I believed in their mission and kind of, you know, innovation and, and constantly pushing that envelope. But uh, it was really the scale, you know, I mean, like um, working at scale, creating programs at scale just hadn't been something I'd had uh, exposure to. And if there's anywhere in the world that's going to scale, uh, it, you know, Amazon has is, you know, quite the reputation for, for growing uh, exponentially. So. Yeah, and so you're you're with the Amazon Web Services, yep. the cloud folks who are out in out in Virginia. They've been out there for a while. Yeah, 
Uh, Do you know Ian Jones? I think he's out there. I, yeah, uh, Ian and I are really uh, close. We're in the same. We're in the same org. I actually Ian started at Amazon as a talent operations manager, so leading a really big recruiting coordinators org. And he kind of wanted to get back into recruiting. Yeah. Uh, and I, I snagged him and brought him over to my team. And then I ended up going to another team. Uh, he moved back into a manager role. And so now we we sit about 10 feet from each other. So. Nice. Yeah, I've known Ian for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, it must be so fascinating at Amazon. I, uh, you know, I told some of the folks that I live around, you know, I'm going to be talking to these folks at Amazon. And, and then we spoke. And I'm like, okay, I don't want to any, ask you anything you can't say about Arlington. <laughs> Right, so I won't, but I will say, like, I, I happen to look on how many uh, open positions Amazon has right now. Do you mm-hmm. know how many open positions Amazon has? In Arlington? No, no, like all over. Oh, whew. No clue, but it's got to be a pretty crazy big number. 26,000. Okay. That's crazy, right? Yeah. That's a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and those are 26,000 open positions that clearly have been open for a while. You think about how many orgs are not even that size, period, right? I mean, not like many. really really big yeah. software companies right. are not 26,000 people. So, so Mike, so I, I do have a question, and maybe you can answer this. Is like, if a position, if a company has that many open positions, like, doesn't it kind of get comical to the point of like, like, well, like, if you have that many open positions, they must be open for a long time, like, what do you do? Like, how do you grow a business when you need that many people and you can't get that many people? It's, um, I mean, it's the constant challenge, right? I mean, AWS and Amazon have, have grown exponentially just year over year, yeah. right? And the, the number just keeps getting crazy. I feel like every time we, you know, think about like, oh, how many are we going to have to hire next year? It's always something even more than what you expect. And you're expecting, you know, kind of a, a big number. So, But how do you do that? Like, how do you... Because I know you were you're about 38,000 10 years ago, something like that. And now you're a half million? Yeah, including like fulfillment center and sure. drivers and you know, kind of all that. It's still ridiculous, whatever. It is. It's just, so, so yeah, so how do you fill those positions? I mean, I think at a high level, and the thing that I enjoy you know, thinking about is you know, having a, a group of leaders that can think three years in advance, right? Like, like thinking of really outside the box of I mean, completely turning recruiting upside down, right? Like a, the recruiting has been traditionally um, kind of the same for a long amount of time. Sure, we've had technologies that have come in and, and things have changed, but for the most part, you know, it's like here's a rec, okay, a recruiter's gonna go try to find somebody, look at applicants, like fill that role. Um, so I think thinking, you know, three years in advance um, while you still have that engine running, that, because you can't ever stop, right? I mean, it's just, it's growing too fast to, have everyone just completely stop and say, okay, let's, okay. let's, let's do something, do something different. different. Yeah. So it's like you have to keep that engine running the whole time while mm-hmm. you're, you're you know, starting to toy around with some different ideas and thinking you know, in, the, in the future a little bit. And, and so, um, you have, so your group, because the specialty, right, that was the thing I thought was your specialty recruiting organization. So what does that mean? So, I mean, as a whole, like, um, this org was basically brought in to uh, to try new things, right? Like in a small, in a, in a so small controlled environment. Things. Yeah, and, and I mean, I've moved around even a few different teams inside of, the, inside of this org, but um, to try experiments in a you know, kind of smaller controlled environment, uh, look at that data and see like, were we able to be more efficient in certain areas? You know, um, you have some wins, some losses, you try to learn from those experiments mm-hmm. and then try to scale them. And so, you know, not every experiment is a, a full-blown success, mm-hmm. but every time you learn something, it's like, okay, well, this part worked, this part didn't. Um, all right, let's shift a little bit. Now let's go try to this. So the, the idea is just to try new things. Um, so as that full engine is running and just continuing to, you know, to fill wrecks, we have this kind of little small group that's the trying out new things to help support that, but to get those learning lessons. So hopefully we do figure something out that can scale you know, and what's been more. a surprise? What's been like? You know, obviously, you're going to be talking about innovation this week. So, yeah. Um, I mean, I think some of the surprises. Um, maybe it's just not even surprises, but uh, innovation is really difficult, right? <laughs> like um, <laughs> surprise. <laughs> it's it's really tough. Um, and when you say it's tough, what do you mean? Um, I think coming up with the ideas is is easier than the execution, 
right? Uh, okay. and, and especially in like really big orgs, and I think this goes for any org, like you have your metrics that you, um, you judge recruiters towards, and you know, you know that, that philosophy and that day-to-day -day routine. Well, all of a sudden you have this you know, org coming in trying to do something completely different, and it's tough for others to kind of wrap their, their mind around it or really understand like what they're, they're trying to do. Um, and so I, th I think you know, sometimes uh, that can be you know, kind of a, a difficult you know, piece um, of it. But it's, it's not, it's not an, an easy thing, I think, from a, a leadership perspective. You know, there has to be that appetite for disruption um, because we're gonna do things a little bit differently um, maybe not even judge recruiters the same way based on the same metrics, you know, than what the, the norm is. Um, so it has to, I think you have to have that, that appetite. And so what are you going to be talking about this in your, in your presentation? Um, so uh, innovation, um, how to think about, you know, innovating. So I think like the processes leading up, um, making sure that you're, you know, being customer centric, right? Thinking about your customer. Um, how do you know it's going to benefit them? How are you going to track data? What does that, uh, the experience look like for the customer? And the customer can be anything. It could be the candidate, it could be your hiring manager, it could be your leaders, you know, there's, you can define that a lot of different ways. Can you share an example of how you, like, take us through, like, an innovation process that you were part of? And, and all the pieces that that, you know, because I'm thinking people listening going like, oh, innovation's cool. I know my, if I said the word innovation to my boss, they'd go like, wow, yeah, I want that. Right. Now what? Um, so, I mean, first you have to define a problem, right? Like overall, um, there has to be some type of okay, we'll say, bottleneck uh, that you're that What would you're be seeing? a problem you might want to pick? I, I have one in my head. You want to throw one out? Yeah, like, okay, we're not hiring enough people. <laughs> yeah. that's, a, that's a common problem. Yeah. Um, so, like, one, one example of this, if you start to, to work backwards a little bit. Um, I'll say not, not enough people are applying. Be very specific. Not enough people are applying to our positions. Okay. Um, well, I mean, I think you see this with, with you know, software engineering, right? I mean, there, the supply and demand, the, the demand for software engineers far out, outweighs the, the supply. Um, one thing that, that we've seen is, you know, traditional recruiting is recruiter gets a rec for a software engineer and they're yeah, reaching out to candidates saying, do you want this one thing? Right, it's this, it's this one rack. I always, for whatever reason, um, relate it back to like a, a car dealership. Like if you worked at Honda, all you're you're calling people saying, "Do you want to uh, buy a Honda?" Well, there's a small subset that that actually wants to to buy that Honda. So everyone wants a car, or some people want a car. Right. Some people want some of that. Somebody might yeah. want a Mer Mercedes. And then like then like at that moment. So um, yeah, so your so your response rate, your your reply rate to that is going to be people that are actually in the market for a car and actually want to buy a Honda. So you have this now. this kind of yeah right now this small subset. So uh, an idea that we had was you know well let's let's flip this around. So instead of starting with a wreck and trying to go find a candidate, like let's go find candidates and then through this you know process uh, we will narrow it down and go find the right for them, right? So we just kind of like, yeah, kind of like reverse engineering. I mean, AWS is so large, you have this huge open, um, you know, pool of roles. Some that are you know machine learning focused, some are um, you know front end focused. How, how like, many folks work at AWS? Oh man, thousands. Oh yeah, like tens of thousands. Tens of thousands. Yeah. Yeah. So so you're starting with the candidate and saying, okay, I'm going to help you find a job. That's clever. Because if I reach out to just, if, if my outreach message is, look, I work for Amazon. Uh, you may have uh, thoughts about Amazon, you may not, yeah. but you know, my job is to kind of be your talent agent. Sure. Walk you through this process. Like answer your talent answer, agent. As talent as, agent. You're, like another you're kind of like a sports like agent, yeah, right? Like, let me answer questions. Let me tell that. you what it's like to be here. Yeah. You tell me everything you want to do. You and I'll find me, you something. And I will, we'll narrow this down I'll and we'll go find you that's the, a great the idea. right thing. So, so your response rate is going to be a different subset of people sure. that would normally, you know, respond to that. To, yeah. To the, like, well, now I'm looking, I can talk to a lot more people. Right? I can talk to people who are looking for a job and would consider Amazon. Like those are the two criteria. Yeah. And they don't have to be looking now because like if I'm having that relationship with them, like when I was when we were in the agency space, I was in the agency space, you know, I talked to Sarah 
and you know she's a CPA, and I'm like, hey, we're having a great conversation, and I know in six months I might get a rec for a CPA. I'll call her. It's kind of like that agency model, so in a way. Ian, <laughs> what's funny, Ian Jones and I, we we talk about theory and high level like uh, yeah. recruiting stuff all the time. But Ian and I both said this is as close to the agency model as you can get, yeah. right? Even if you don't have a rec, if you're totally. an agency recruiter, you're still exactly. you're trying to talk to as many yeah. people as you as can. As many people as you can. I was so walking into a theater the once. And these four guys walked out. One of them had a T-shirt on, and the back of the T-shirt said "Unix Systems Administrator." I went right up to him. I said, "Are you a Unix SA?" He's like, "Yeah." And all of a sudden, the three people around him—that was his boss and his two coworkers—they like swarmed him. And I didn't recruit him, but I turned them into a client. There you go. So, like, yeah, you got to be hustling like that. Yeah. So, so I had a couple of ideas for what's you know, like my ideation. Yeah. One of them was that um, if Amazon built a, uh, like a, a pop-up coffee shop, mm-hmm. you know, like a Starbucks, uh, in an area where there are a lot of people, like it could be here in Clarendon, or, and it was staffed by hiring managers and recruiters and engineers, and coffee was free, and people could come in, hang out, you know, that would be a really interesting way to build relationship mm-hmm. and to get to know people. Um, I was actually going to do this in, when I, I was leading TA for a company that had offices in India. And it would have been very inexpensive for India. Like it would have been nothing uh, to open up a coffee shop in, in these uh, technology parks. And I thought, wow, and it could be open like all the freaking time. Mm-hmm. You know, because programmers work yeah. all the time. And they could come, they could hang out, they could pick someone's brain. And um, that was one of my ideas. And then the other idea, um, uh, you know, people who are listening could hopefully steal this. I was getting a presentation by a woman who had done, uh, she, she's huge in machine, well, in, in big data, and she built an app on Twitter using the Twitter fat pipe that it could predict within like 80 some odd percent chance if a woman was gonna have postpartum depression. Now why that's important is because if you can catch that, it's huge. Mm-hmm. It makes a huge difference for the woman and the baby and all that stuff. So I said, well, could I? Can you set something up where I know with better than like 30% chance that if I call somebody, they're gonna want a job that day? And she's like, oh, absolutely. And it's very simple. It's like you get like, you, you basically talk to a thousand people and you track who you've spoken to, you need their Twitter name, um, like ask them a question of like, was this a good time to call you for a job? And she could take that data, put it into like this you know, software program and mm-hmm. like just scan Twitter for people who uh, and she could build a key. Statements. Yeah, and she yeah. could totally build a key on the people that would. Because what happened was, um, did you ever hear the the, the uh, Target Baby? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the Target Baby. So people who are listening don't know the Target Baby is um, Target sent out a postcard to all these women who they knew were pregnant. Who, you know, they said, "Hey, you're gonna be, you're gonna have a baby soon," and had like a little baby bump on the front of the postcard. Mm-hmm. And you know, come by Target because they knew if they got women, then they had them forever. So this guy gets the card because his daughter is like 15, and he's like so angry, he calls up the target, what are you doing, my daughter's not pregnant, blah, 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 and it wasn't obviously the store that sent it. And he finds out later that his daughter was pregnant. <laughs> yeah. and how do they know that? So they knew that because they, they, they just look at all this data and they found that there were like three correlating purchases, which was um, like a red bath mat, a big bag, and something else, like things you wouldn't think about. Right. And that, that's what gave him that confidence that these people were, these women were pregnant. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I know like, um, like Intello um, has like a, uh, I think it's called like most likely to leave or something like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 There's sure. like a, an algorithm that they've built where. Of employees you know, who are gonna leave. Yeah, where they see, you know, when you're searching on Intello, you see, um, you know, they, they have the algorithm built out where, you know, people start updating their social media um, you know, when they start updating LinkedIn and things like that, right? Like, that's probably a sign that people are going to leave. So they have all this, you know, built-in stuff. But yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of creepy. Kind of similar. I mean, it's creepy. Like, yeah. that whole, like, kind of measuring intent yeah. is creepy. Yeah, yeah. I love your, your first idea, though. Like, yeah. of, of kind of having these, you know, pop-up shops. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, I think uh, at, at scale, I mean, it's, it's something that's kind of crossed my mind of, like, you know, every major metro city in the country having these events basically where we can hire engineers. You don't have to have like a specific rec or a specific team. Just, and this is kind of how Google and Facebook do it, right? Like they get people to offer and they accept the offer and then they go find 
like the right team for them. Right. right? So they don't have to like yeah. interview them with like a specific, you know, group. But at scale, you know, from a geography standpoint, we're we're not confined much anymore. I mean, right. especially like at a, a scale of Amazon or any big company, like we can hire pretty much across the country. So like having like kind of a kind of a, a pop up event like that, you know, global metro cities or and globally, yeah. yeah so how can folks reach you? Because we got a we only got like a minute left. Uh, so you can reach out to me, uh, email, you know, always works. You What's can your email address to tell people? Like? Uh, email is A, it's, it's A Henshaw without the W. So apparently there was another A Henshaw at, at some point within Amazon. So it's A H E N S H A at Amazon.com. Uh, Henshaw. Henshaw. Yeah. I like that. A little, little swag to it. Uh, or you can just, you know, find me on LinkedIn. Um, you know, I always, uh, you know, try to take the time when people connect with LinkedIn and they reach out to me, even if I can't provide a ton of value. I always try to get back to everybody, awesome. you know, uh, awesome. play that part. So thank you so much. Thanks. Lauren, so, appreciate yeah, it. No, I this appreciate it. So everyone that um, I've had with me, Alan uh, Henshaw. Henshaw. <laughs> Alan Henshaw from Amazon Web Services. Thanks so much. Yeah, appreciate it. Do you want to hire the best salespeople for your company? Our friends at SalesFuel have developed a digital platform to help sales managers hire smarter. And it's called SalesFuel Hire. SalesFuel Hire is an online software tool that measures a candidate's sales tendencies, motivational factors, empathy, and behaviors, along with key indicators that identify job fit. It will even warn you if the candidate is going to be toxic to your team. The analytics identify natural tendencies that often go undetected during the interview. Don't you want to hire a salesperson that's a natural fit? Candidates complete a four-part assessment, and then Sales Fuel Hire alerts the hiring manager on what to look for in the interview. It also suggests interview questions based on that person's profile. And most importantly, your team needs no training to get started. Because you're listening to this show, I can give you a special one-time deal. You can purchase one month of unlimited access to Sales Fuel Hire for $199, but only if you use the promotional code LORN, that's L-O-R-N-E. With this special offer, you can send an unlimited number of candidates through the Sales Fuel Hire tool. To get started, go to salesfuel.com backslash hire and use the promotional code LORN, that's L-O-R-N-E, to get this amazing deal.